to keep your company. And uh, today will be a very special workshop for the bootcamp, also for the Blockchain Academy. We invited Johnson uh, together with us to introduce you uh, everything about uh, DeFi and also his, some, uh, some of his personal experience, uh, career advice, uh, personal journey and a lot. Yeah, I really look forward to the sharing. So yeah, feel free to start anytime. Perfect. Um, thanks everyone uh, for attending, first of all. Uh, so uh, my name is Johnson, or you can call me Minion as well. Um, so I'm on Twitter as uh, Zero X Minion. Um, so uh, I joined crypto uh, in 2017. Um, so currently with a investment firm based in Hong Kong, um, helping them on, I guess, like the research and also investment um, side of things. So I'll probably share my screen for now. Um, uh, Max, uh, you probably need to enable participant screen sharing because I can't share my screen. Sure, I think you can do it now. We just... Uh... Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. Let me... Yeah, this, this is better. Can you see me? Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, I guess like for today's sections, um, so I'll probably um give you guys a bit of an intro about um decentralized finance. Um, so I know a lot of you guys. Um, I guess. Um, not, I'm not really familiar right, with um, decentralized finance itself uh, and also probably very, um, I guess, very fresh in terms of around the crypto space um, and also DeFi um, sort of space as well. So I guess like um, to start with, obviously, um, this section is not for financial advice um, and also this is mainly for educational purposes. Um, so um, I guess I do your own research when you actually sort of type uh, diving into all those um, decentralized finance protocols, tokens, or um, or uh, research or whatsoever. So I guess like um, today I'll be mainly covering um, sort of uh, four main topics. Um, and also this is the sort of the first section out of uh, two sections. So there will be another sections um, down the tracks about two weeks later, I think. Um, so for, for, for today's sections, mainly just briefly talking about, um, I guess, like DeFi um, ecosystems, um, traditional finance and also versus crypto DeFi. Um, um, the other topic is mainly around uh, career in crypto. Um, and also um, airdrops, briefly touch on airdrops as well. Um, so I guess like um, a bit of about myself. Um, so I'm Xerox Minion. Um, so as a pseudo or known name on Twitter. Um, so I'm currently with Genesis Block Ventures based in Hong Kong, uh, investment arm of Genesis Block. Um, so helping them on research and also investment side. So previously, I'm um, with um, Hobby, um, uh, covering listing and also research as well. Um, so helping them um, on token due diligence, um, investment research, and also investment course. Um, so I'm on. If you guys have any, uh, if you guys have Twitter, um, so you can also follow me as um, Zero X Minion as well. So I time to time post on research. Um, um, I guess like ecosystem um, investment thesis or analysis on, on Twitter mainly. I'm also ship posting on Twitter um, uh, and um, degenerating on DeFi um, and also looking around um, data at, I guess, like for um, on-chain analytics purposes, looking at, um, say, for example, um, Ethereum DeFi um, analysis or on-chain transactions or whatsoever, just to form a brief overview around the ecosystem. Um, so, I guess like a lot of people um, actually curious about um, what makes up the DeFi ecosystems. Um, so um, I guess like, first of all, I think um, presumably most of people know uh, what is crypto in general, um, as in like a Bitcoin, um, Ethereum. So I wouldn't really touch on these um, um, uh, as a sort of prerequisite for this sort of section, uh, but mainly diving into 
um, what is sort of the DeFi ecosystem in general, um, and also talking about the specific DeFi sectors that we've seen um, in the industry, so on and so forth. Um, so I guess like, first of all, um, DeFi, DeFi, it's a decentralized finance. Um, so pretty much just think of the, the current finance ecosystem in a very decentralized manner. Um, so uh, what we have in the decentral, uh, sorry, what we have in the finance, uh, financial ecosystem uh, are say, for example, lending, borrowing, um, trading. Um, so lending, borrowing being the banking ecosystem, um, trading being say, for example, um, equity trading, um, uh, Forex trading, um, and so on and so forth. Um, maybe derivative trading as well. Um, you can buy futures, you can buy options. Uh, you have uh, a lot of like, say, for example, home loans. Um, you have a lot of, say, for example, um, um, I guess like financial advisors within ecosystems. Um, you, you can form a diversified portfolio through different asset classes. Um, you have bonds, you have um, equities, uh, you have um, Forex, you have a lot of other things within the financial ecosystem. So um, it's pretty much very similar in, in terms of the DeFi ecosystem as well. Um, so where you can have, say, for example, lending, uh, so also called money market protocols, um, trading protocols, which is essentially you trading stocks, say, for example, uh, you have you need to have an exchange to trade these um, stocks or tokens. Um, you have um, derivative protocols, which enable you to trade um, futures or um, options or structured products. Um, you have, say, for example, um, I guess like uh, the banking kind of playbook as well, as in terms of the uh, lending, borrowing protocols, um, liquidity protocols, and so on and so forth. Um, so I guess like, um, I want to briefly touch on, first of all, a few key sort of sectors within the industry. Um, so uh, first of all, the lending borrowing protocols also called money market protocols. Um, it's essentially very similar uh, towards the banking sort of uh, uh, model, but uh, in a very different way. Um, so all the, um, I guess, loan books or the lending um, um, I guess the like market within the, the traditional finance ecosystem, um, it's mostly under collateralized. So you are essentially say, for example, um, you uh, collateralize 1 million US dollars to borrow, say, for example, 2 million US dollars, um, just because you have the credit ecosystem or credit scoring um, on top of your um, sort of, um, say, for example, asset or, or your um, credit history. But um, in DeFi, you can't really achieve that just because there's no, um, I guess, like a credit history or you can't really form credit, credit history uh, for now. Um, and since everyone just basically earning um, multiple addresses, uh, multiple Ethereum addresses, say, for example, um, so you can like uh, an individual can create a multiple or a limited um, um, Ethereum addresses without any, say, for example, uh, KYC, um, so know your, know your customers or uh, any any sort of like credit histories. Um, so uh, you can't really do, say, for example, under collateralized lending uh, in general, um, just because, first of all, there's no credit history. Secondly, um, everyone can create multiple addresses um, uh, on top of that. Um, and um, and uh, like you don't have, say, for example, KYC functionality enabled uh, within the DeFi sectors. So um, take an example of these, say, uh, uh, a few protocols, say, uh, MakerDAO or Aave. Um, so they are under collateralized, um, mainly targeting at, um, say, for example, major assets. So by major assets, meaning um, uh, 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 like blue chips, say, for example, uh, with sufficient liquidities um, listed on major exchanges, Take an example of um, Ethereum, that will be a major asset. Um, um, USDC, USDT, that these are the stable coins. Um, these are the major assets as well. Um, a few blue chip DeFi tokens, these are all the major assets. So uh, we have we also have a few protocols target targeting at long tail assets as well. So uh, namely Silo Finance, ULA Finance. Um, so um, 
when you're talking about long tail, meaning um, small cap, uh, low liquidity, um, people don't often trade these tokens. Um, and uh, there are not many exchanges listing these uh, um, um, tokens. So you can't say, for example, use them um, uh, widely on exchanges or uh, trading on exchanges. So these are the lesser known um, tokens. Um, so there are protocols targeting at long tail as well. So I mentioned um, previously that uh, most of the sort of uh, lending protocols only targeting, targeting at under collateralized lending. Um, there are a few sort of over collateralized lending as well. Uh, so potentially looking at say, for example, credit lending market, but these protocols are mainly targeting at institutional. Um, so say for example, Maple Finance or TrueFi. Um, so uh, these protocols are mainly basically uh, attracting institutional, um, I guess, say, for example, hedge funds, um, traders, uh, 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 market makers um, um, onto the platform to lend out these uh, or to borrow assets from um, the, 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 the platform uh, where they can sort of, um, I guess, um, provide a, a, a better sort of capital efficiency around these things. So I'll, uh, I'll briefly touch on uh, another sort of sector as well. So it's called uh, trading protocols. It's essentialized. Uh, it's essentialized, essentially decentralized exchange. Um, so we call it uh, DEXs. So DEXs being CEXs being um, centralized exchanges. Um, DEXs being um, decentralized exchanges. Um, so we have, say, for example, Uniswap, SushiSwap, Doodle, Curve, um, and also a bunch of others um, targeting at different things. So the most famous one would be uh, Uniswap or, or the most sort of uh, uh, used one um, is called Uniswap. Um, so uh, so uh, some, of, some of you may know that, um, so the current, I guess like the current traditional finance uh, trading exchanges, mostly uh, or all of them should be um, order book format. Uh, so where you put like, say for example, um, bit ask, uh, putting all those like uh, orders on a order book um, and then essentially filling the bits or filling the sort of ask uh, when the market moves. But uh, instead of order book uh, in DeFi, we have AMM DEXs. So what, what do we mean by AMMs? Um, so it's essentially um, um, a function by X times Y equal to K. So it's a sort of mathematical formula. Um, it's essentially, um, it's a sort of a curve that defines the relationship between um, two tokens and then uh, equal to a constant sort of, sort of uh, numbers. Um, so I wouldn't dive into uh, too much detail about this, but essentially it's, it, it means, it, it essentially means another sort of type of, um, I guess, trading uh, mechanism um, uh, similar to words, say, for example, uh, order book format. Uh, which enable people to trade uh, two tokens at a certain price. Um, um, and when the market moves, the price moves as well. So, um, uh, so uh, uh, on top of that, we have, um, I guess, like another concept called impermanent loss. Um, so it's essentially meaning it's opportunity cost. Um, so say, for example, um, if you hold um, uh, a, uh, if you hold, uh, I don't know, um, uh, Apple stock, say for example, uh, and also you, uh, and also you are also holding um, uh, Amazon stock, um, and then um, what if, say for example, you provide uh, the liquidity towards um, the protocols, so you are essentially market making the tokens, um, and then uh, and then the prices will change, and essentially uh, the, the the change of the price is essentially meaning the opportunity cost by not holding these um, assets um, uh, across a, a, a time horizon. So I'll probably show you uh, a, a brief example on this as well. Um, so take an example. Um, let's see if it works. <laughs> so this is the um, Uniswap uh, trading protocol um, um, website. So when you click launch app, um, so I've got my, my MetaMask here. So for anyone who doesn't know what is MetaMask, 
Um, it's essentially a uh, your gateway entry towards the Web3 or crypto or DeFi um, ecosystems. So it's essentially a wallet which enables you to um, in chat with um, various different uh, DeFi protocols on chain. Um, so, uh, so I have a, my wallet here um, where, say, for example, I can, uh, there are a bunch of tokens that you can trade from. Um, so, for example, I can trade um, uh, from one, uh, from ETH to one inch. I put one ETH and it calculates the price for you. Um, so essentially, um, it's a trading sort of simple, simple, simple trading, um, sort of uh, user interface, um, for people who want to actually buy or sell, um, certain tokens on top of that. Um, so you can also see a bunch of, um, I guess like, um, data. Um, so, um, TVL total value log is essentially meaning, um, the total liquidity within the protocols. Um, so uh, when you when you conducting say for example tradings, um, you essentially need say for example market makers or liquidity to perform these activities. Um, so so you have these sort of I guess like x number of um, value of uh, liquidity within the protocols that people can trade on top. Um, I guess these are sort of a trading volume um, if you want you if you want to look into. Um, so some, some sort of, um, historical charts or some sort of, um, volume data as well. Um, so these, I guess, is these are the sort of, um, the top tokens that have been traded in the past, uh, probably like 24 hours. Um, so you have a bunch of stable coins, so USDC, DAI stable or, or BTC, um, Tesla stable as well. So these are, the, I guess, like the top, um, um, I guess the pools. Uh, which essentially meaning um, so the most liquid pools or the most liquid pair within the protocols itself. So you can see that Dai USDC has three hundred forty one or four nearly forty two million dollars of of uh, liquidity within the protocols, um, and so on and so forth. These are the sort of uh, recent transactions that hap that that is happening uh, live right now. So one minute ago. So um, this is say for example Uniswap. Uh, we can ha also have uh, sushi swap. It's so called sushi swap as well. Um, so, um, so, so it's just different, slightly different UIs, but the logic is the same. Is essentially connect wallet, uh, and then say, for example, you want to trade one ease um, to sushi. Sushi is the um, the governance token of the sushi protocols, sushi swap protocols. Um, and then you can essentially um, play around with these as well. So um, I guess uh, like, I guess coming back towards the topic itself, um, so you can you can see that there are a lot of uh, protocols around uh, sorry, there are a lot of trading protocols or landing um, sort of protocols within the DeFi ecosystems. Um, so uh, the other thing that I want to touch on um, is um i guess like aggregators and also smart contract insurance um so aggregators so um like right now um i've mentioned that there are multiple um trading protocols say for example uniswap sushi swap doodle curve um these are essentially meaning different avenues of uh, different trading avenues for different users um but what if say for example i have Taking have like a one million um, liquidity over Uniswap, but also one million you uh, uh, one million um, liquidity over Sushi Swap. Um, does that mean the users need to say, for example, um, buy a certain token, um, fifty percent of a certain token from Uniswap, fifty percent of a certain token from Sushi Swap? Um, so that makes user experience really clunky. Um, so that's why we have so-called aggregators. Um, so these aggregators essentially meaning they aggregate liquidity from different uh, trading avenues. Say, for example, um, Uniswap, SushiSwap, Toto. Um, so we have like one inch, Paraswap, CowSwap, different things, um, different mechanism, different underlying technologies. But at the end of the day, um, they are essentially aggregating liquidity from different venues. Um, and also making sort of, I guess, like 
uh, trading experience more through um, for traders, for users, um, for people who want to buy or sell tokens. Um, so the other small thing that I want to touch on uh, is so-called smart contract insurance. Um, so um, in, in the traditional finance space, we have uh, insurance, reinsurance, say for example, um, you have, um, I guess, like personal health insurance, you have home insurance, um, you have travel insurance, so many, uh, so many different insurance protocols around um, our everyday life. So we also have so-called smart contract insurance protocol as well. Um, so we have Nexus Mutual, uh, Insure Ace, um, Bright Unions, and also a lot more. Um, which essentially having um, different sort of design mechanism um, to cover, say, for example, smart contract failures, risks, and, um, bugs, uh, exploits, or um, hacking events, or um, other, say, for example, um, uh, I guess, say, for example, deep hacking events, or market risk, all those kind of things. Um, I guess, like, um, Two of the other important sectors that we see in the sort of um, industry or the DeFi um, sectors are on-chain derivative protocols or and also um, 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 infrastructures as well. So, um, so take an example um, um, for on-chain derivatives. So essentially, uh, these are the sort of decentralized finance protocols to trade um, um, like futures or options protocols. Um, so for perps, we have DYDX, perpetual protocols, um, synthetics, and also a bunch of others. Um, can be either order book or AMMs. Um, so order book, say for example, DYDX is order book format, um, where you have, uh, I'll probably show you here, uh, DYDX. So you have all those, um, I guess, like for people who trade um, equity or forex or uh, uh, whatever assets, they're much more familiar with um, this kind of uh, format. Uh, <clears throat> uh, needs to confirm. Okay, anyway, um, so if you see like entering the sort of UI interface or for, for the YDX, you will see like a chart, um, order book format, um, bid, ask uh, over like a very traditional way of, uh, of trading. So um, this is sort of the, the YDX um, kind of way of doing things. Um, the other sort of, um, I guess, like a way of doing things is essential AMMs. Um, which essentially is very similar towards um, the sort of the spot trading sort of protocol over there, um, which I covered previously. Um, so we also have options. Um, so um, example being um, OPM, OPYN. So these are the all options trading protocols, um, essentially offering, um, I guess, say for example, call options or put options um, for um, a certain token or a certain um, sort of assets. Uh, we also have exotic options. Um, so say for example, Alchemia. Um, so Alchemia is essentially a, um, how do I put it? Uh, a derivative protocol for um, say Bitcoin or Ethereum hash rate. So you can also speculate on um, Bitcoin or Ethereum hash rate as well in terms of change, um, in terms of a lot of other things. We also have um, interest rate derivatives. So, um, so one of the issues uh, within the DeFi ecosystem is that we only have variable interest rate. So, like um, uh, if you recall, um, um, say for example, um, every day you deposit money into a bank, these are more or less fixed interest rate, uh, where it doesn't really change on a daily basis, but it will change um, because, say for example. Um, the fat increase or decrease interest rate due to inflation um, sort of target. Then uh, you, you also have like, say for example, term of deposit where you lock up interest rate for six months or year or even um, five years. Um, but in the deep ecosystem, we only have um, variable interest rate where it changed um, very often, say for example, a minute or two or something. 
Um, so um, one of the other, one of the sort of um, issue that we want to solve is essentially how can we actually say uh, lock up interest rate or um, make it fixed? Um, so that's how these, I guess, like interest rate derivatives protocol coming um, from. Um, so we have like, say, for example, panel finance, um, element finance, um, and also a bunch of, a, a lot more others as well. Um, and um, they, they want to make um, DeFi lending or borrowing interest uh, fixed rather than variable. Um, so uh, a few other, I guess, like um, infrastructures that I want to touch on um, is um, stable coins. Um, so um, you will see a lot of news, say, for example, uh, mentioning, I guess, like USDC, USDT, um, Tether, uh, UST, or other type of um, different um, stable coins. Um, so um, I guess, like, very briefly, um, three different sort of categorizations of stable coins. Um, it's one, first of all, it's fully collateralized, essentially USDT, USDC, um, partially collateralized FRAX. Um, um, algo stable coins, um, Terra or USD or ESD ba uh, basis catch, and also uh, a lot more others. Um, so some of you, uh, uh, if paid attention towards, I guess, like um, recent industry news, you will see, um, I guess, like news around uh, UST collapse, um, UST depegging. Um, Terra Luna issue and also all those kind of things. So these are so-called algo stable coins, um, which essentially, um, I guess, meaning using um, the sort of protocol design or the algo uh, on the back end to adjust um, to stabilize the the sort of um, the value uh, behind that uh, that particular token. So there are a lot of like issues, pros and cons. Um, and also a lot of, I guess, like interesting um, things that you can explore around algo stable coins. Um, but none of those algo stable coins actually stables itself, stabilizes itself for now. Um, so there are a lot more work to be done um, in order to, um, I guess, like to put on like um, algo stable coins to, to be used with the DeFi ecosystem properly. Um, so um, another, I guess, like uh, important sort of very important um, infrastructure is called uh, oracles. Um, so uh, represented by, say, for example, Chainlink, Band Protocols, Pits Network. Um, so um, in DeFi or in the on-chain space, we have um, certain issues that we need to use oracles. Um, so oracles essentially meaning um, data points um, or um, uh, like like data data feeds. Um, essentially, um, say for example, on the blockchain, we only have on-chain data. Um, so we don't have off-chain data available on-chain. Um, so what does that mean? Um, that means essentially we, we don't have access to, say for example, um, weather data or uh, 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 to, uh, to, ha to have access, say for example, um, interest rate decisions. Um, so these are the all, all the data available off chain. We're in real life, um, but on chain um, we don't have these. So we need some sort of service providers or protocols to feed these data towards on chain. So say um, so Chainlink does that, Bank Protocol does that, Pist Network does that as well. Um, so what uh, what they does is essentially. Um, finding a reliable, um, I guess, data source from, um, I guess, like from off-chain. Um, so take example, interest rate decisions. Um, where does the data coming from? Uh, are they coming from the sort of um, the official website or from Reddit, say, for example? Um, and uh, how do I verify if, if it's, it's true, truthful data? Uh, it's as reliable data. So Chainlink um, does that in terms of verifying these off-chain data as reliable um, and also accurate uh, to be fed into, um, I guess, on-chain um, to be to be further used by other DeFi protocols. So there are a lot of, um, I guess, like interesting um, sort of use cases. Um, if we have, say, for example, um, off-chain data is coming from the traditional space towards on-chain, um, so you can have, say, for example, rule-based, um, um, I guess, like um, uh, some sort of rule-based uh, investment strategies. Say, for example, uh, if interest rate um, hits 
three percent. Um, I want to divert my on-chain um, investment towards X, Y, and Z. Um, so you, uh, so these actually making sort of um, um, on-chain sort of DeFi um, really convenient, also really um, sort of um, um, having having more sort of use cases around these um, purely on-chain transactions. Um, so I guess uh, lastly, I want to touch on is um, essentially Ethereum staking service providers. Um, so we have uh, Lido, um, Rocket Pool, and also a bunch of others. Um, so um, as you may or may not know, um, Ethereum has been um, transitioned towards um, the staking model rather than the proof of work, um, which essentially using uh, a bunch of um, sort of machine to calculate the hash or to calculate a bunch of the mathematical formula in order to form a verification proof. Um, so that the, these are the old days for um, Ethereum, uh, which is called proof of work, which is essentially mining. Um, so uh, by now, today, for today, Ethereum is fully transitioned towards um, proof of stake. So essentially, you have a staking service uh, where you need to stake, say, for example, um, 32 ETH um, into a node, um, and that node will perform um, sort of ver uh, verifications for transactions um, and putting, um, I guess, like blocks towards the um, Ethereum blockchain. So um, why are these uh, important? Um, just because um, they, they, they form the sort of backbone of the um, Ethereum protocol um, and, um, and um, they, um, they, they provide a lot of other sort of use cases, say, for example, um, how do you actually generate additional um, sort of cash flow from a sort of staking service provider point of view? Um, how do you actually optimize um, staking uh, strategy? Um, how do you actually enable um, DeFi on top of those staking service provider? Um, um, these kind of um, situations. Um, so I guess like changing topic a bit, um, I guess look to look into the um, uh, NFT FI ecosystems. Um, so I know a lot of people talking about NFTs these days. I know a lot of people talking about metaverse these days, um, and uh, a lot of uh, other people. A lot of people actually curious about um, the um, the NFT itself. So um, we also have like a very um, early, uh, young, vibrant um, NFT ecosystems, where we have um, essentially copycatting the DeFi um, sort of playbook into NFTs including uh, marketplace, liquidity protocols, um, lending, borrowing, um, pricing, um, aggregators, derivatives. So you can even trade um, perp or um, options on NFT, uh, on a particular NFT collections. Um, and you can also say, for example, fractionize your NFT. What if um, a, an NFT price being, being uh, too high, say for example, a million dollars, um, but you want to enable other people can again access towards that particular uh, sort of price actions or price appreciation in the in the future. So you can actually fractionize, say for example, uh, that particular NFT into one million pieces, um, and then you are selling one uh, 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 each individual piece for a dollar, and that forms uh, the one million dollar pieces um, overall. Um, so what? So when, um, whenever that particular NFT appreciating value or depreciating value, uh, that will get reflected on these um, fractionalized token or fractionalized share. Um, so, um, so uh, these kind of things. We also have like <clears throat> NFT buy now pay later as well. Um, so uh, where you um, like in every day you've seen some of the sort of uh, buy now pay later service providers. Um, so essentially micro, micro credit um, and tap it into the sort of a consumer end where they offer uh, sort of uh, a credit loan uh, towards these consumers. Um, and then uh, and then for, uh, for these consumers, uh, they can sort of, I guess, buy into these NFTs in super early stage or um, cheaper or some sort of like a uh, loan book for them. Um, so, I guess there are a lot of uh, sort of a content to, uh, I guess, to digest. 
Um, so I'll probably take a pause over here. Um, if anyone has um, any questions regarding um, the sort of uh, very brief overview around um, the sort of deep ecosystem, just let me know um, and just type it in, 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 in the chat box or whatsoever. Uh, more than happy to sort of answer um, for a few questions. All right, if not, uh, I'll probably get going. Um, you guys can also um, ask um, uh, uh, questions at the end as well. Um, so, okay, wait, hang on. Uh, so uh, Jack asked, um, do you have any sort of YouTube channel you would recommend um, for in-depth review? Um, so I would say um, I don't really watch YouTube channels, um, but I do recommend people to jump on Twitter. So there are a lot of uh, people posting content on Twitter, uh, which uh, like, I mean, depending on, on a, what particular type of, what type of account that is. Um, so on chain analyst or say like analyst type of person, um, um, where they post um, re really insightful analysis, really insightful um, sort of thesis. Um, so um, I think for YouTube channels, most of the YouTube channels are more linked towards marketing purposes um, rather than say, for example, uh, very sort of uh, analytical purposes. But, um, but I think we do have some sort of YouTube channel, which is more like uh, very um, educational purposes uh, rather than marketing purposes. But, um, um, I don't have particular um, YouTube channels, um, but I do recommend uh, people to jump on Twitter's um, follow, say, for example, VC analyst or um, a few sort of very insightful people just talk about um, tokens, talking about, um, I guess, design mechanism, um, infrastructures, and also ecosystem, um, these, these kind of things. Yeah, um, okay, cool. Uh, let me move on to, um, I guess, I, the topic two. Um, so second topic of the day. Um, so talking about traditional finances versus crypto DeFi. So um, I guess like very briefly, um, so there are a lot of big differences between uh, traditional finance and also DeFi. Um, so uh, for people coming from traditional finance, um, um, like um, I think, I think um, like for people coming from traditional finance, maybe looking at say, for example, fundamentals uh, analysis, P ratios, um, DCF analysis, um, <clears throat> um, team, and also a bunch of others. Um, so you, you need to have numbers before say, for example, investing into a particular things or, or trade uh, or, or trade a particular things. Um, but in crypto, um, we don't generally do that. Um, not because we don't have fundamental, not because of um we don't have um um uh, I guess like formulas or, or numbers or ratios. We do have these, um, but it's just like it's it's not getting the market consensus itself. So like for these, say for example, for these DCF or uh, PE ratios to work well, you need have you need to have market consensus on top of that. But in DeFi, we don't have market consensus in terms of what kind of ratio that we look into, um, what kind of ratio that is um, that are really, I guess, like really efficient, um, really reliable. Um, so we, we use our own judgment. Say, for example, um, some of the groups might be, say, X ratio is really useful for that particular group of tokens. Um, then they, 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 um, they make investment decisions based on um, that. That's also fine. 
but uh, another group may be um, having a contradictory view on, on that as well. Um, so they can invest according to why criteria. Um, so um, there are no like set of, um, I guess, like standards ratios uh, that we look into in terms of crypto DeFi. Um, and um, I guess like revenue and also like a lot of people may be talking about revenue, say, for example, um, and um, but revenue may not may or may not reflect it in, in terms of token values, um, just because if the revenue um, directly uh, reflected in token value, then that that could be considered as security, say, for example. Um, so there are a lot of like concerns within the DeFi industry in terms of how do you actually structure um, your 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 investment strategies, your uh, what kind of ratio that you look into, um, etc. But um, generally speaking, for um, DeFi, uh, especially for retail or individual investors uh, or or traders or um, players, um, um, so uh, people generally speaking, um, eight first and also uh, research later. So by eight first research later, essentially meaning you buy the token first. Um, and then once you have skin in the game, you do research, like you do proper research. What does this token do? Um, what kind of value does it reflect within the token? Um, and uh, uh, what, what, what kind of other competitors on the market? So these kind of things. Um, the reason behind this is essentially the market is moving too quickly. Um, if you have a formal sort of research, uh, I guess, whatever, thesis, um, research paper, um, that you finish, say, for example, within a week, um, then the market might be already moving on towards another, another sectors or another token. Um, um, so, so the market moves too quickly. Um, so it's actually better off just to say, for example, uh, as long as you have uh, a, a uh, as, as long as you have some sort of information, some sort of knowledge about that particular token, um, buy first, research later. So that's how the sort of current, um, I guess, like DeFi retails or DeFi individuals play around with the market. Um, so another thing is um, digital finance, a lot of things are very institutional driven um, and um, um, individual or retails uh, don't have direct access towards uh, a lot of like, I guess, like a market. <laughs> but for um, DeFi, um, it's actually very retail driven. So um, a lot of retails, a lot of individuals are within the game uh, to play around with other a lot of protocols, a lot of DeFi, a lot of lending borrowing, um, so on and so forth. Um, so um, I guess like um, another sort of aspect that I want to touch on is um, essentially uh, the user experiences are very completely different. Um, so. <laughs> Um, so, like in traditional finance, you target it as, say, for example, um, uh, your mom and dad, um, and um, I guess like um, people who want to seek certain sort of criteria in terms of investment strategy, certain risk profile. So, um, so um, whenever you, you choose an investment strategy, you need to have certain risk profile. Uh, plan your, I guess, like um, um, your your investment across like. Um, <clears throat> five to 10 years uh, horizon. Um, but in DeFi, we don't tend to look at that long. We look at, say, for example, three to six months or um, maximum a year. Um, so, um, and also the sort of the users within the DeFi ecosystem are actually very different compared to traditional finance. So, um, so all those sort of like little things um, creating a very different sort of ecosystem uh, we call it DeFi um, compared to um, digital finance. Um, so I guess like um, touch on um, crypto, in, sorry, uh, career in, in crypto. So I know a lot of people um, want to tap into the sort of so-called Web3 or um, crypto industry. There are a lot of, um, I guess like there are a lot of um, things that you need to look into. Um, so um, it's actually not hard, but it's actually not easy as well, depending on what kind of angle that you're looking for, um, what kind of um, sort of skill set that you have. Um, so take an example would be, 
um, if you are coming from, I guess, like science, technology, engineer, mathematical background, um, you can easily, um, I guess, tap into engineer role, um, developer, auditor, um, on-chain data analyst, um, venture capital, say, for example, uh, or even white hacker, uh, if you want to sort of do some a bit of a hacking on these. Um, for non-sort of um, science, technology, um, engineer, sort of mathematical backgrounds, um, there are a lot more other sort of choices that you can choose as well. So, for example, you can still tap into venture capital. Um, you can still tap into trader, say, for example. Um, but a lot more people choosing, say, for example, more, uh, more on designer, um, product manager, crypto event organizer, um, BD, business development for um, crypto exchanges, for um, project teams, for, um, 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 for a lot of sort of, I guess, um, C5, uh, centralized finance um, service providers. So um, um, I guess like, how do you actually tap into career in, in crypto? Um, so first of all, my experience is um, learn a lot of things, um, so self-driven. Um, so you need to actually proactively looking for things to do say for example um if you find DeFi really fascinating um so we don't have resources so within the industry um people don't have the resources to train people um people want other people to proactively seeking all those um, um resources or knowledge by themselves um so self self-study a lot of things check out a lot of twitter threat uh, YouTube channels, say, for example, um, understanding what to look for, um, play around, um, use your own money uh, to, to experience the sort of the, the, uh, the DeFi protocol journey. Um, even, say, for example, $10 still helps. So it's the, sort of the, it's the sort of experience that helps you to understand the protocol itself. How do you actually do lending? How do you actually trade on Uniswap? Um, and uh, what are some of the big differences compared to traditional finance? Um, so these things need to be done uh, uh, only if you can put yourself into the same shoes of that these protocols. Um, so, uh, so I guess like um, I guess the, the minimum requirements for uh, creating crypto, uh, especially say for example, all those um, engineer on-chain data analysts. Uh, venture capital, uh, why hackers? Um, these people need to have a lot more um, confident in terms of, say, for example, um, self-study in terms of what, what kind of protocol design that is, finding information, uh, do a lot of readings, um, et cetera. Um, for other kind of uh, roles, um, say, for example, designers, uh, UI, UX, or product managers, um, you also need to sort of uh, experience yourself in terms of what kind of design flow that we have or we currently have uh, within DeFi ecosystems and also compared to the sort of uh, Web2 um, sort of design flow. For uh, crypto event organizer, uh, maybe less of it, but uh, you still need to understand, um, say, for example, the very the basic um, um, sort of sectors. So what is lending? What is borrowing? Um, what is uh, trading protocols? Um, how do you actually attract um, sort of a crypto natives or crypto people to towards um, events? Um, and uh, who are the major sponsors? Uh, and uh, also, uh, who do I look for in terms of finding sponsorship? Uh, who do I look for in terms of finding event venues? Say, for example. Um, so you still you still require um, uh, uh, sufficient understanding of the crypto or DeFi space. So um, there are a few things that I suggest you uh, people to do in order to kickstart. Um, so um, so there's a site called Rabbit Hole, um, which essentially a uh, is a education site. So I'll probably show you here. Uh, so essentially, it's a, a education kind of sort of learning uh, website for you to um, to say, for example, I'll show you. Uh, so if you can complete quests, then you can actually level up. 
um, and then you can use these as a, your on uh, on chain resume. Uh, so I'm gonna let's get here we go. So essentially, um, you have different quests for you to do, and also you can actually earn tokens or earn money on top of that. Um, so uh, to take an example, so there are a lot of school set that um, uh, the, the website sort of mentions, say for example, um, intro to DeFi. So I can click that and then getting started, say for example, land, provide liquidities, borrow USDC on Aave, which is a landing borrowing or mar money market protocol. If I click start, um, then essentially it will take me towards um, the Aave website. Um, and then you can just connect your wallet And it will show you the sort of interface um, and where you need to sort of, I guess, like familiarize yourself um, for how do I actually land out my money and an interest or how do I actually land out my money and also borrow some other tokens on top of that. Um, so um, once you complete that, um, they will reward you with certain points or certain sort of NFTs. Um, so you can use that as your sort of, uh, yeah, um, I guess, on-chain um, resume itself. Um, so the other thing that uh, I want to touch on is like, say for example, DJ score. Um, so DJ score is a very sort of um, DeFi or crypto native on-chain resume. Um, so people actually, so a lot of uh, VCs, um, um, like teams actually, higher based on your DGEN scores. Um, so the, 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 uh, the more DGEN you are, um, the, um, the higher the score you will get, um, essentially meaning um, you, you try to so many different protocols, you lose so many money, so much money, or you, 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 make, you make so much money, um, but, the, but the goal is, is, is essentially trying out um, so many different protocols. Um, and then uh, you become an expert within um, the DeFi industry itself. Um, so take an example, if I uh, connect my wallet here, um, so it'll go to my profile, mute it. Um, so you will have a lot of, um, I guess, action points over here. So you have, oops, okay, anyway. Um, so, this actually provides you some sort of overview in terms of your activities across um, the, the uh, time horizon um, for DeFi, NFT, or the or others. Um, so take an example would be my own profile here. Yeah, here we go. So this is my own profile um, in terms of the DJ score. Um, so um, I rank. 19, um, top DeFi, top 5%, top 5% for DeFi NFTs. Um, so recently activity, I've, I've been using USDC, um, WBTC, um, some token, some token, Ethereum, Uniswap, um, Parasoft aggregators. So you will see my activities uh, uh, cooling down since, I guess, like 2022. Uh, what's the way not 2022? Oh, yeah, yeah. So since 2022 over here, um, the most activity that I have is uh, was in 2021. Um, so I started the, the whole address like way back in 2017. Um, but I re like the real start kickoff um, was around um, mid 2020 where the DeFi summer came. Um, so there were, you have a lot of actions as well. So. Um, like using OpenSea, so OpenSea is a, a, a NFT um, marketplace, social swap, um, uh, trading protocols, um, so on and so forth. Um, so I guess I'll probably take a pause over here if I have any, um, uh, if, if people have any questions that, that, um, that I can answer. Um, so I guess like uh, Kai Wei asked, um, are there any job vacancy related to sustainability in the um, Web3 space? Um, uh, I would say yes. Um, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, the sustainability that you mentioned is more around, say, for example, um, green energy, um, um, I guess, like um, these kind of things. 
Um, if, if these kind of things, uh, I'll say yes. Um, and then, uh, but it's, it depends on, um, I guess what, what kind of thing, uh, what kind of role that you're looking at. Um, not many, I would say, but still quite a bit, um, but mainly uh, within the sort of traditional space. So there are a lot of like, I guess, like work to companies uh, looking into the uh, sustainability kind of, um, 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 say for example, uh, carbon-based, uh, green uh, green energy projects within the space. Um, so um, you can actually tap into these uh, by providing, I guess, like Web3 um, insights. Uh, Ching Wei asked, how do you find these projects in their early stage? Um, so that's actually very good questions. Um, so I guess I won't go into detail, um, but I'll probably show you here. Um, so there's a, a data service provider or a market insight service provider called um, CoinGeckos. Um, so essentially um, provides you information around different coins, price, um, volume, market cap, where to trade, um, price history, um, all those kind of informations. So one of the ways to find early stage projects is if you click cryptocurrency, uh, or here, new currencies. Um, so you will find recently new uh, listed in the past 30 days. So these are new projects that are coming um, sort of online in say, for example, last added 15 minutes ago. Um, so that's one of many ways. Um, obviously you need to do a lot of due diligence on top. Um, so say for example, um, this is obviously scam. Um, this is obviously scam. Um, this is obviously scam. So a lot of scam within the tokens. Um, so, but this might be legit. Um, if you click on that, if you find interesting, you click on that, you can actually go to their website um, and then to see what is this coin? What is this coin doing? Uh, what are some of the information? Who are the team behind it? Um, do they have like Twitter account? Say for example, here, um, like, um, who are the, some of the uh, sort of main people behind this project? Um, so, so these are only like one of many different ways of doing due diligence or or finding early stage projects. Um, so, uh, okay, so there are multiple uh, multiple questions. So, uh, Jack asks, any tool that you recommend to use to get into or uh, get onto um, on chain data? Can these tools uh, write script like XQL to get data syncs? Um, yes. Um, so there are multiple things, multiple tools. Uh, so I would actually, I will actually cover more in details in the next section as well. So one is called Do Analytics. Um, so uh, this is the on-chain analytics platform for um, on-chain data. So say for example, um, Uniswap, I can find Uniswap data here, volumes, fees collected. So there are people actually um, um, doing all those SQL uh, query um, and then and then drawing all those dashboards. So if you click on this, um, you can actually see the query itself um, if, if you know uh, what is SQL or SQL. Um, so you can actually say, for example, um, I have an account, um, yeah, whatever. Um, so I have an account. I can I can actually uh, I can find myself. So there are people. I guess there are like organizations or teams, um, for, uh, like sp specialized in um on chain data. Um, so say for example, Blockworks, um, Six Degree. Um, so they've done a bunch of uh, very interesting um dashboard. Um, other tool sets. Say for example, Flipside Crypto. Um, so this is another uh, SQL to, uh, SQL sort of uh, dashboarding um, like site for you. You can use, say, for example, you can search same thing, Uniswap. Uh, dashboard. Anyway, a lot of data maybe. Uh, discover. Okay. 
So there are actually people um, like writing these SQL query um, just to extract data on your data to find different insights. Um, so I'll, I'll probably cover these in, uh, in, in much more details in the next sections around um, on-chain data, uh, how do you actually find um, early stage um, projects. Um, so I guess you can also ask, uh, is there any financial company like HSBC to join this field? What is the role they are playing? Um, what related positions can we participate in the financial area? Commercial banking also, how audited and also accountant join this? What is the difference between uh, them in DeFi and also in traditional finance way? Um, so um, I guess I'll probably ask uh, as to how audited and also accountant join this. Um, so um, there are a lot of, I guess, like uh, funds, uh, venture capital, um, uh, say, for, and also exchanges. Um, they they need to do uh, internal accounting, or they need to say, for example, um, uh, for some reasons, um, they need some auditors to audit their financial statements. Um, so, so you can actually specialize in that particular area to um, help these companies to do crypto accountings. So crypto accounting is very different compared to digital finance accountings. Um, there are a lot of like, I guess, like um, vague, vague areas within the space. Um, but um, um, like um, you, you may need to sort of uh, look into that particular things uh, in much more details. Um, so I'm not really an accountant, so I, I can't really um, say um, what, what, what kind of things that um, you can do. Um, but uh, is there any financial company like HSBC to join this um, field? Yes. Um, they are looking to it, um, but more or less is, uh, is uh, they're more tapping into crypto in general. Um, say, for example, offering um, um, sort of Bitcoin investment um, to retail or individual or users, uh, rather than say, for example, tapping into DeFi directly. Um, so DeFi is still in very early stage. Um, so it's too small for um, a bank like HSBC to tap into for now. Um, but maybe in five years later, uh, once the industry grows bigger, then uh, I'll probably speculate uh, they will definitely come into the game. Um, and uh, in terms of, I guess, like financial areas, um, commercial bankings, um, I think it's, it's mainly if you want to stay in, say, for example, Web2 banking, um, but also looking to crypto. Um, then it's then I think that's mainly more for experimental, or uh, mainly for um, I guess like uh, understanding what's going on, uh, understanding uh, what are the major players, what are some of the risks, rather than say for example, um, day to day involved um, within the sort of the DeFi, DeFi space, day to day involved in terms of the um, token trading um, whatsoever. So it's a, it's an indirect environment rather than a direct environment. Um, so I guess like last part is what is the difference between them uh, in DeFi and also in traditional way? Um, so I guess that's a very hard question to answer. So um, I'll probably answer it in this way. Um, so in traditional finance, it's it's very closed book. Um, so you don't have transparency. Um, say, for example, how do you actually put that in that or how do you actually lend out? The, the money that you, um, uh, uh, sorry, how do you actually lend out uh, the money that you deposited in the bank? Um, you don't know where, how much sort of, uh, how many sort of money multiple that they created. Um, and um, um, and also uh, you, you don't know what the process behind, say for example, uh, if you want to get a home loan. Um, so in DeFi, it's all transparent. Um, and also it's, it's putting uh, uh, all those um, information on chain uh, where you can also see um, uh, if you deposit your money into that particular protocols, then you can all, uh, actually see um, who are those um, sort of uh, uh, like a, a, a where where does your money um, lend to um, to which account um, and how do you actually generate um, sort of a yield or interest rate? Um, so these are very transparent. Um, I guess I guess that's that that's probably like a very brief way um, to put into. Um, uh, um, I think, I think that's it for now. Um, any more questions? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Kenny asked, 
Could a CBDC like the future e uh, HKD have a role to play in DeFi? Um, I would say yes and no. Um, yes, being um, there's a definitely a role um, to play in DeFi. No, being uh, these are two different separate, um, I guess, like product <clears throat> or sectors. So CBDC is more like centralized. Um, so, but DeFi is is decentralized, permissionless. Um, so the way I probably can see it is essentially say, for example, um, CBDC like the e Hong Kong dollar to replace USDC or USDT. Um, so where uh, the Hong Kong government to issue um, CBDC on um, on Ethereum blockchain, and also people uh, people can redeem, um, and also um, uh, these I guess like e Hong Kong dollars. Um, and to put it on chain and also to intact with the DeFi space. Um, so th that that's one of the ways that uh, I could foresee um, to have a sort of very interesting role to play um, in DeFi. So um, just sort of um, a note uh, for now, USDC, USDT, or even uh, Euro stable coins or other type of, many other type of different stable coins are not issued by a central bank like CBDC. Uh, they are issued by um, a, a trust or custody um, sort of service provider uh, based on in very different jurisdictions. Um, they they uh, they're not central bank, but they are the, um, corporate entities um, issuing these um, I guess USDC fiat backed um, tokens. Um, so uh, so if CBDC or uh, central bank come into play. Um, I will see a very sort of um, interesting sort of um, scenario to play in DeFi or um, to sort of support DeFi uh, innovation um, in the future as well. Uh, um, so uh, I guess Wilson mentioned uh, airdrop. Um, so I was, I was thinking to touch on based on that in very last sections, but uh, time running out. Uh, but I'll probably put a few words on top. Um, so... Um, Another interesting sort of, um, excuse me, um, another interesting sort of um, uh, thing that uh, a lot of users, uh, why a lot of users want to tap into DeFi um, is airdrop. Um, it's essentially meaning uh, giving away free tokens or giving away free money. Um, so free, free, quote, unquote, free, free. Um, so it's not free, free, but uh, Give you out, give out money. So it's essentially um, protocol. Um, say for example, Uniswap, SushiSwap, um, um, uh, a lot of DeFi protocols, um, giving away um, governance tokens to bootstrap liquidities or user activities. So think of that as say for example, um, Uber giving you a voucher um, to let you use um, the the booking system, um, or um, like DD giving you some sort of discount um, in the very beginning to bootstrap the user base. So very like exact same sort of, um, I guess, like scenario for, for DeFi protocols as well. So instead of giving out um, like, like fiat money, because they don't have fiat money, um, uh, they give out governance token where these governance token can actually have some sort of value, um, I guess, like a market value um if 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 it traded on on the market um so these are the ways some sort of i guess like um DeFi protocols to bootstrap um these user base or liquidity in the very beginning um so like if if you were to participate um DeFi since the very beginning say for example from mid 2020 to today um some very experienced DeFi players they've received at least a hundred K US dollar airdrop um, um, uh, if they play it right, at least. Um, so some, 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 a lot, uh, some um, users actually uh, receive like 500 K or even a million dollars airdrop, um, depending on how do you actually um, play it. Um, so uh, these, these are some of the very interesting, I guess, like story behind um, DeFi where some people may tell you I made a lot of money out of DeFi. Uh, that, so that, that could be one of the sort of um, a potential sort of um, uh, reason behind it. Um, yep. 
I think I think that's it from me, really. Um, uh, so I'll probably wait here a few more minutes uh, just to see um, if if um, people have more questions around um, today's sessions. Um, so I know uh, that's a lot of uh, information to digest, um, and um, and uh, there are a lot more uh, information that I haven't covered. Say, for example, um, like on chain. Um, and how do you do on-chain data analytics? Uh, what are some of the sort of insights that could be potentially looking to um, um, when you are actually doing due diligence for that particular project or sectors? So I'll probably cover um, in the next sections. Um, and then um, you have a lot of other things, say, for example, um, uh, who to follow on Twitter um, and uh, what, are, what are some of the actual sort of um, um, like activities that you can do within the DeFi protocols. Um, yes, you can. Uh, you can get a copy of the uh, slides. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, I think I'll probably wait for a few more minutes, but um, I think that's it for my today's sessions. Really.